Your best friend in the world, Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And in today's video, we are going to talk about how spills can cause TempDB contention. Isn't that, isn't that just miraculous? We can just keep finding new ways to abuse TempDB. Uh, it wasn't like table variables and temp tables and, uh, you know, I don't know, all the other stuff that hits TempDB. As if that wasn't enough, now we have to worry about spills causing TempDB contention. And... Boy, does that suck. But first, let's talk about you and me. Uh, if you have already done this stuff, if you have already liked, if you have already commented, if you have already subscribed, and I do thank you from the, from the deep, deep, dark bottom of my heart for doing that, uh, and you want to go steady with me, you want to take things to the next level, um, you can click the link in the video description just below to uh, sign up for a low-cost $4 a month membership to the channel, which will... Um, just to say thank you for doing a good job. That would be cool. Uh, if you need help with your SQL server and you think, boy, Eric Darling sure would be useful uh, doing any of these things, uh, hit me up. My rates are reasonable. If you need me to do anything else with SQL Server, uh, the same thing applies there. Uh, we can talk. My, my rates will remain reasonable just for you. Just make sure that you, you, you said, that you make, sure, make sure when you, when you hit me up, you say, hey, uh, I'm coming from your YouTube channel where you said your rates are reasonable. Otherwise, I'll have no idea who you are, and I might, I might say something unreasonable. Uh, if you would like to get some high-quality, low-cost SQL Server training that is good for the rest of your life, so the longer you live, the more, the more, the more it's worth, uh, you can get about uh, 24 hours of it for about 150 US dollars at my site there. You can use the discount code SPRINGCLEANING for that. If you want to catch me live and in person, uh, I will be in Seattle, Washington with Kendra Little doing uh, two days of SQL Server performance tuning witchcraft and wizardry, war warlockery, uh, and uh, that, it would be cool to see you there because it's my birthday and I'm making goodie bags, so you have that to look forward to. With that out of the way, let us begin our, our SQL Server partying. Now, uh, let's go over to SQL Server Management Studio and let's make sure we have no indexes here. The first thing I want to point out is that if we run this store procedure on its own, it'll run for about 1.3 seconds, right? We spend uh, about 200 milliseconds scanning the clustered index and then another second or so over here in the sort, right? Okay, so this runs pretty quick right now by itself with nothing else going on. Let's come over to SQL Query Stress and let's run this. And we're going to give this a few seconds to warm up. What we're going to see while this starts warming up and doing stuff is that uh, the queries start running for longer and longer over here, right? No longer are we at the, just the 1.3 second mark. Some of these have been going for almost four and a half seconds. What you're going to see over in this column is a lot of stuff being run a bull, right? So run a bull is going to be SOS scheduler yield related. And if we keep looking over here and running this, all of a sudden we're going to start seeing queries taking a lot longer over here. Now, classic tempdb contention signs uh, would be seeing stuff like um, in the wait info column, like page latch underscore up or page latch underscore ex. And sometimes you might see that in here if you have enough of the spill contention going on. That could still totally happen. But we're not seeing that in there. What we're seeing are queries running longer and longer because they're getting bogged down in TempDB all trying to do the CPU work to deal with the spills. Now keep in mind, this is only 50 threads, right? It's 100 iterations, but it's only 50 active threads at a time, right? All the results from SP who is active will say about 50 rows down here in the armpit zone for anything that's actively running. So like not a lot in here is like, you know, um, like, like, I'm not exhausting worker threads as part of this. Uh, if I ran a lot more threads, things would get a lot worse. But you can see in this column that now stuff is taking like 9, 10, 11 seconds in here. And indeed, if I run my store procedure with, um, well, with, the, with the rest of the workload going, it's going to take a while, right? That was like 1.3 seconds before. Now this thing took, well, just about 10 seconds. Or, sorry, just about 9 seconds. 8.675 seconds now here, 726 seconds here. And if we look at the weights for this query, right, if we come over here and look, the weight stats for I.O. completion won't be that bad, right? This is the typical sort spill thing in here. 
And I think that there's been some improvement in the row mode algorithm for that. Really what we get bogged down in is the SOS scheduler yield weights over here. There was about six seconds of those for the eight second query. So six, about six of the eight seconds that we spent waiting for this thing to finish were just like waiting on like, like CPU, cooperative CPU scheduling. And again, this isn't a ton of stuff going at, going at once, right? I'm not like, you know, throttling the server with a thousand active requests. This is just 50 queries running. Granted, they're all doing the same thing and they're all spilling, but you know, that's uh, just kind of funny to see, right? So uh, yeah, it's like running this over and over again, things get kind of wonky. And we, so this ran for almost three minutes and we barely completed uh, the, uh, we over a little over 900 total copies of this query finished in that time, right? So like on average, about five and a half seconds of CPU, um, the, like some of the iteration average in there, 17 seconds. So things, things were getting really slow uh, on the server itself. Now with, with nothing running on here, if I come back and run this again, uh, TimTB goes back to normal. We're at about 1.3 seconds for this. Cool. Let's look at how we might fix that. Now, um, now in memory, TimTB stuff might help, right? Depending on um, what kind of contention you're seeing. If we were seeing the page latch contention, then temp the in memory TimTB stuff might be good. You know, but I think you know, for a lot of the queries where I see, uh, you know, something like this, where you know there's a there's a little spill from a little sort, and we could fix it pretty easy with an index. We can we should do that. Now, one thing that might surprise you a little bit is that creating this index on reputation uh, does not fix the spill, or rather does not get rid of the sort. It does make the sort smaller, right? Because, or it does make the sort faster because we're reading from a much smaller index, but it doesn't actually get rid of the sort. To do that, we need to actually match the sort order of the reputation column here uh, in the index to the sort order of the query. Now, a lot of people might write stuff like, uh, does index dire sort direction ever matter? No, it's stupid, leave it alone, you're an idiot. Uh, that's not true. There are lots of times when it does matter. This, is, this, this can be one of them. Uh, another time when it, when it matters quite a bit is when you're writing windowing functions and the windowing function specifies uh, I mean, the, not in the partitioning clause because the partitioning clause doesn't have an order, doesn't, doesn't have an ascending, descending. But in the order by clause of a windowing function, you might specify uh, some column descending, and then your index sort direction matters quite a bit. So with this index created, at least I'm pretty sure it's created, if we run this, we'll see that this query finishes just about instantly, and now we have a top here but without the sort involved, right? So now, if we come over here and we run um, a SQL query stress for, again, 100 iterations on 50 threads, uh, we won't even have time to get back to SQL, management ser SQL Server Management Studio because this will have completed in about 15 milliseconds. So uh, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal there. I like it quite a bit, and uh, I think you should too. So anyway, with that out of the way, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that uh, you are now able to go out into the world and resolve TempTB contention issues from spills because it's a good thing to do. You'll, you'll probably be a hero to someone if you, if you start fixing these sort of problems. Now, granted, th these aren't the sort of like big query problems that you might see from like reports where you go from, you know, 30 minutes to three seconds or something. But this is the kind of like, you know, highly concurrent workload stuff that you have to start thinking about and uh, analyzing and addressing when you're dealing with big, highly concurrent OLTP workloads because this kind of stuff can really sneak up and bite you. So, uh, you know, as usual, um, SP Who is Active is a great tool to start tracking this stuff down. Um, and, you know, the more you can do to, you know, monitor and get an idea of what's going wrong on servers when things are in a highly concurrent state, the better job you can do of starting to tune things so that you don't have to worry about the server falling over. Um, if I were to re if I really wanted to make things awful, I could have thrown way more th worker threads at this and things would have been just terrible in here, right? 50 active users, right? Obviously doesn't take much to bog down a SQL server. So you know, you can, you can see some really profound effects even from small amounts of really highly concurrent spilling activity.
So anyway, uh, that's about it for this one. I got a couple more videos about uh, rewriting functions and function inlining and stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna get get to those, and then I don't know. I think we're gonna, we're gonna I don't know what we're gonna do to be honest. We're we're just gonna close these tabs out, and I'm I'm gonna get on an airplane tomorrow. Then I'll I'll figure out what to do when I get home. All right. Thank you for watching.